Hello everyone, today I want to clarify one topic uh, within ERP Next here and this is the topic of the cost of goods sold and how I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be assuming that we are importing some stuff in a container and this contains 100 of some pseudo items so this can be anything and what I've done here is that I'm try I've tried to create a a scenario here where we are importing a container with 100 items and the cost of this container is a hundred thousand this can be Kenya shilling can be dollars can be whatever currency you like but I'm going to be using Kenya shilling for this demo and then here you see that the cost of the item of course is going to be you can see the formula up here d4 divided by c4 this is the cost of the container divided by the number of items this is what is going to give us the cost of each item but here uh, we are going to have other charges. For example, we have the freight charges. This is the cost of uh, transportation of your goods, probably from overseas to your country. And I've given this a uh, figure of 20,000. And then I was also taxed some amount, which is 15,000. And the total of this, of course, is 35,000. And this is supposed to be added to this cost if you want to get the real cost of the goods you are selling. So the total cost of this thing is going to be 100,000. You can see if I, uh, I, I highlight on this, 100 and, the, and that 5,000 is the sum of D4, F4, and G4, which is 100,000. And then uh, this 20,000, the freight charges, and then the taxes. That gives us 135,000. So here, the cost of goods sold now, other than being the 1,000 that is here, which is ideally only the cost of purchase divided by the number of items, is going to be the cost including the freight and uh, taxes divided by the number of items which gives me 1350 now remember you are not only limited to this there could be other things like uh, insurance there could be other stuff like i don't know uh, clearing or handling all those things you can add here so that you can get the total cost and then the cost of goods sold is going to be this the sum of all that that's what is going to give you this now, this is what we consider as the cost of goods sold. So each item of this 100 cost you 1350 to arrive in your warehouse. And therefore, when you're selling, you should, of course, consider this to be the, the cost. And therefore, you get your selling price from this, uh, from this price up here. So how do we do all this magic within ERP Next? Let me show you. I'm going to open this and then let me just close this one. I'm going to go into a purchase invoice. I'm going to go straight into a purchase invoice. I'm not going to do uh, orders and all that. Of course, you can follow the process. If you don't know, you can just leave me a comment and uh, we are going to look at that. But for now, I just want to jump straight into the purchase invoice. So I'll create a new one and I want to purchase our pseudo item here. Oh, sorry, this is a supplier. So let me first of all grab the supplier and say these things are going to be due in maybe two weeks and then here we need our pseudo item yeah remember this is what we are buying not the not the container so you can also decide to buy it in containers depending on how you want it and then you can of course do the conversion ratios so what is this uh, yeah this is a purchase invoice the rate of a thousand and quantity here we want 100 remember because that is what we have here i want us to follow this 100 so the con the cost that we are seeing on that page now is this 100 100 that we have here that is what you are seeing here we don't have any 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 taxes at the moment so we are going to leave it at that and then we save it just don't worry about that you see that the grand total here is 100,000, then I just submit this document. When I submit, I just still want to confirm that the total here is 100,000. Now remember, this 100,000 is the 100,000 we have here, all right? The cost of this stuff. Now, we need to receive this so that we can be able to view the accounting ledger. So we are going to go into create, and then we do purchase receipt. When you do purchase receipt, we are also going to receive the whole amount, 100,000. So I'm going to save and submit it. When I do that, if you go to the view button up here, now one of the items we have or one of the buttons we have here is stock ledger. So if I click on the stock ledger for this thing, you can see there is an in quantity of 100, which is what we purchased. We can see we have a balance. Don't worry about the balance. We want to focus on this incoming rate. 
this incoming rate of 1000 is the incoming rate we have here you see this thousand which is ideally 100,000 divided by the 100 which is the cost of buying divided by the total number of items gives you the cost per item which is a hundred uh, a thousand here now remember this is what the ERP is giving you at the moment but we have not told the ERP that we need also to add other charges like freight and what was the other thing and taxes in our case so how do we do that I'm going to introduce you to something called landed cost voucher landed cost voucher and that's what I'm going to be doing now let me do phone 16 and that's what we do so this is um, this is what this is number three so we will need this number purchase receipt this number three or you can even use the purchase invoice not a problem and then we go into a document called landed cost voucher this one all right then here we are going to create a new landed cost voucher the up, uh, upper details here are next to obvious then here the ERP allows you to select from either a purchase invoice or a purchase receipt let's do it from a purchase receipt and we know it is purchase receipt number three so we select it and you can see it already comes with the grand total which is a hundred thousand then here we can click on this button that says get items from purchase receipts so click on it and we can see that we purchased a pseudo item and this is the description of it and then the quote it was a was at a hundred then the amount was a hundred thousand all right we didn't have any applicable charges and now down here we want to add other taxes and charges so we need first of all to add the expense head so we can see the first expense head is VAT and we can see this was taxes you can give it any any description that you want here I mean it doesn't have any limit so let me say taxes on import and what was the amount of taxes on import the taxes were 15,000 so we can add that one here where are we we can add this one here that's 15,000 we can add another row and this was freight charges and this freight charges actually let me just copy this one here it looks pretty good and then I just remove that and I think this was 20,000 and so the system is already going to be calculating for you here and you can see the total of this is 35,000 so you will know you need to know how much you paid extra so that you can keep comparing with this to make sure that you are doing the right thing right then here you can choose the this uh, the this distribution uh, uh, type that you want to use Either whether it's quantity amount or distribute manually of course you don't want to do distribute manually and leave unless if it's something very specific for our case here we are going to go with quantity because we want to use this 100 and distribute this amount among that 100 equally yeah so there are some notes there you can just read those if you really want to the most important things that we needed were this so now if i save it and submit note that what we did here we added our purchase a receipt then those are the items that were there if there are more items you are going to see them there and then we added other taxes and charges down here so we can go ahead and submit that when we submit that if we go to this purchase receipt of ours here so i click on this this is the purchase receipt this is how we viewed our stock ledger from when we saw a thousand as the incoming rate so if we check this now you see here that the item is the same but now the incoming rate has been adjusted to 1350 this is the exact figure that we have here so the erp has added this to this one and then it has divided by 100 to give us that landed cost or rather the cost of goods sold so ladies and gentlemen that's how you get the cost of goods sold in the erp if there's any questions please feel free to drop it in the comment section below and i'll be happy to assist thank you so much and keep learning